Now we will assemble the spoke fixture assembly for a common 36 spoke wheel. The parts of the spoke fixture assembly are the outer plate, the outer cushion, the inner cushion, the inner plate, the filler plate, the bridging plate. There are 18 button head bolts, 18 nylock nuts, and you can also see two coupling pin sleeves in the foreground. Turning now to the wheel, this wheel is a 36 spoke wheel and the spoke hole circle diameter is about 45 millimetres. The wheel is conventional spoke lacing, which means that each spoke crosses three other spokes in three locations, one, two, three. Most wheels have 36 or 32 spokes. The first sprock that will be available is for a standard 36 spoke wheel. This particular hub has a standard Shimano cassette hub. Cassette hubs are far superior to those hubs which have a conventional screw-on multi-speed derailleur freewheel. Turning now to the spoke fixture assembly, take the outer plate and the outer cushion and insert two long assembly bolts. Position the bridging plate, inner plate and inner cushion inside the spoke plane so that the inner cushion is adjacent to the spokes and then position the outer plate assembly by aligning the two coupling holes to coincide with two of the nine big gaps between the spokes. Here we are at pre-assembly of the spoke fixture. The two coupling sleeves have been inserted and three long assembly bolts loosely hold the spoke fixture in place. It is approximately centred around the hub and it can still be moved. This is what it looks like end on. At this point all of the bolts have been inserted and the nuts finger tightened. The spoke fixture assembly can still slide over the spokes so that the coupling sleeves can be aligned with the coupling holes in the sprocket. The sprocket assembly consists of the sprocket, spacer, axle boss, bidirectional freewheel that spins in both directions, and four bolts, nylock nuts, pedal chain rollers, and washers. Here is the assembled sprocket and it has to look exactly like this. On the outer face you can see the axle boss, freewheel, spacer and sprocket. This is the inner face with the teeth offset facing the spokes and on the same side as the four recesses in the freewheel. We move on to the coupling pin showing the extraction ring. It is made of common bicycle brake wire which makes a loop and passes through ferrules positioned at both sides of the pin. Here the extraction loop is being swaged and here is two completed coupling pins. At this point the sprocket is aligned with the spoke fixture. You fit the sprocket axle boss over the axle and in and insert the pins between the sprocket and the spoke fixture.
That is all that is necessary to align the spoke fixture with the sprocket. Now you tighten all the bolts, starting with the seven heads that you can see through the sprocket. After you have aligned the spoke fixture, you tighten all of the bolts. The coupling sleeves must protrude no more than the head of the button head bolts past the outer plate. As you tighten the bolts, the cushions compress and this extends the sleeve protrusion past the outer plate face. Therefore you need to start tightening with the coupling sleeves about flush with the outer plate face. So there you have it. The spoke fixture is permanently attached to the spokes which are very rigidly braced. The arrangement is so rigid that there is little or no fatigue of the spokes at or near the wheel hub. Remember that the coupling sleeves end up at the same height as the button head bolts. Now we turn to installing the sprocket on the axle. If you simply slide the sprocket assembly over the axle, the sprocket would rub against the spoke fixture. To correct this, you add a spacer so that the sprocket spins freely. Now we tighten the lock nut against the sprocket axle boss. You cannot put a tool on the bearing cone but you can prevent the axle boss from turning as you tighten the lock nut. This may require a tool on the lock nut on the other side of the wheel. Now you can see that with the pins inserted considerable power can be transmitted through the pins. There is nothing exceptional about reinstalling the wheel on the bicycle. The only difference is that the sprocket sits a further 5 16th of an inch or 7 millimetres away from the spokes than is the case with a sprocket fastened to the spokes. See here that the wheel spins freely without the pins or the, with the pins extracted. And now when I insert the pins between the sprocket and the spoke fixture, you can see that the sprocket and the wheel are locked together. This clip demonstrates that there is very little clearance between the coupling pin and the chainstay and it's very important that the right post frame is selected.